What's up, guys? Everyone keeps asking me, what's going on with the debt limit crisis? And what do I think is going to happen? Well, this is a fluid situation. Lots of things are changing, but here's my best take on all of it. First of all, the United States of America is not likely to default on their debt. That is an insane idea at the moment. Maybe that'll change over the next couple of days, but as of right now, it is very hard to see a world where the U.S. is going to default on their debt. But don't get so excited. There's going to be madness in the media. The mainstream media is going to hype this up. They're going to tell you how the world is ending. They're going to brag about all of the chaos, how bad political leaders on the right and the left are, how the president is willing to work with people, how the president is not willing to work with people. You're going to hear it all. Every single storyline possible is all engineered to get you to click on those articles. Be careful. Separate all of the noise from the actual signal, which is that the United States is very unlikely to default on their debt. There's a whole bunch of reasons why. But how exactly is a deal going to get done? I think that politicians are going to use this opportunity to continue to campaign. That's right. Every time you see a politician arguing in the media, they're campaigning. They want you to know they went to Washington and they're fighting for you. They're sitting there trying to figure out exactly what they can say and what they can do to get attention. Because in politics, getting attention is a huge part of the game. If you get attention, you get dollars. If you get attention and dollars, you usually get reelected. That's the game of politics. And so I think that we'll continue to see politicians play games. The media will hype it all up and enjoy all the clicks, but a deal will get done in the 11th hour. Now, it does look likely that the Democrats will have to cave a little bit to the Republicans. And so the Republicans will run around and they'll say, look, look how smart we are. We got them to cave. The Democrats will step in and they'll say, look how morally just we are. We saved the United States from defaulting by go ahead and agreeing to this deal. Whether that happens or not, a deal is going to get done. Now, that doesn't also mean that just as soon as the deal gets done, the story's over. In fact, I think that the United States national debt will hit an all-time high by the summertime, literally, just within a few weeks. And then on top of that, we will have another debt limit crisis within the next 36 months. So just as in the past, this is simply a temporary moment. It's all bark and no bite. We're not going to have a default, and we're going to be right back in this situation within three years. That's because we have a spending problem in the United States, and the national debt only knows how to go up. It never comes down. But then when you start to look at all the problems that are going to be caused by this, and you add in that interest rates will come down over the next 24 to 36 months, and also we're going to see a return to quantitative easing, asset prices are going to grind higher throughout this as well. As we take on more debt, as more money enters into the system, and there's this tailwind from monetary policy, asset prices are going to do well. As you know, regardless of the asset class, if you hold for long enough over decades, most assets appreciate against the U.S. dollar because the dollar has to be devalued in order to pay off the national debt or try to monetize it. Now, that leads me to where are people going to go? As we have seen throughout the first five months of the year, we have seen many investors who are seeking some sort of alternative. They're looking for insurance. They want to know if the United States actually defaults, how bad could the damage be? And is my money safe or not? Are my investments in my portfolio actually going to do well or do bad in that scenario? So naturally, they're looking for an alternative. Historically, gold has served as a great alternative. It's outside the system. And if the United States was to default, gold probably would do pretty well. But now we have digital gold. Bitcoin, and that seems to be the biggest beneficiary of all this chaos. Bitcoin is up more than 60% to start the year. It was the best performing asset in Q1 of 2023. And there are many investors around the world who are saying, if I need a safe haven, if I need some sort of safety from a default in the United States, Bitcoin might not be a bad option. It's a decentralized digital network that's backed by the strongest computer network in the world. It's outside the system. It's not controlled by anyone. And ultimately, it serves as insurance against all sorts of economic chaos. Now, Bitcoin may not be something that you want to put 100% of your portfolio in. I don't suggest that. But it does feel like if you're going to have some sort of economic hedge, that merely putting a small percentage of your portfolio in that asset, if the economic catastrophe happens, it will likely do pretty well. And so if you look at the politicians, they're yelling and screaming. They're all campaigning right now. The media is hyping them up. They're putting that battery in their back. They're trying to get them all beefed up so that they keep it up 
so that the media companies keep getting clicks. Don't get distracted by the nonsense. Don't buy any of the nonsense either. No distractions and no buying into the narratives. At the end of the day, the United States really, 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 really is incentivized not to default. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Now, the last thing I'll say is I'm not changing anything in my portfolio. I'm not changing any of my investment strategy based on any of these assumptions. This is all predictions. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, and neither do you. And so, naturally, I'm doing what most investors are going to do in this situation. I'm going to keep doing what I already was doing. I don't see any major change here. And yes, there's a risk of a default. But even in a default, given how much I've allocated to Bitcoin, naturally, I think that it'll do pretty well in that scenario. And so no changes for me, but I'd love to hear what you are doing. Whether you're doing the same thing or you're doing something differently, leave me a comment. I'll try to respond to as many of them as I can. That's it. Let's see what happens. We got a couple days. The treasury balance is falling. The default is approaching. The media is yelling and screaming. The politicians are campaigning. But at the end of the day, I think a deal gets done.